Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to r slash Petty Revenge, where the revenges don't ruin other people's lives, but are super duper satisfying. And in today's episode, OP gets revenge on a nightmare neighbor who keeps trespassing on his property, acting like they own the place. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the lineup today. Hit subscribe if you haven't. And as always, you can send or link your stories to this email right here. So a bit of context, this happened in the early 90s, and at the time, my teacher had been teaching for 30 plus years. It was a rural area, so many of my friend's parents had also suffered through at least one year of primary school with this awful woman. I've seen a grown woman cry recounting memories of her experiences. She was really that bad. My second grade teacher took pride in being mean to her students. Wielding control over our tiny bladders was something that gave her a particular satisfaction. One day during cursive lessons, this kid named Joseph asked to use the bathroom. She told him he should have used the bathroom during morning recess and he would have to wait until lunch. A little while later, he starts squirming in his seat and again asks the teacher to use the bathroom, this time with a little more urgency. At this point, our teacher starts berating the kid by telling him that he's a little baby for not holding his bladder like a big boy and suggesting he come to class wearing diapers since he's such a baby. Joseph gets tired of her. He stands up from his seat, stares her directly in the eyes, and proceeds to unleash the most epic man-sized piss that he could muster. As fate would have it, he was wearing one of those mesh material basketball shorts, so the pee just flowed unobstructed down his legs and pooled on the carpet beneath him. A wave of giggling quickly spread throughout the classroom, which was basically the second grade equivalent of a slow clap. Our teacher just stood there dumbfounded for a moment before grabbing Joseph by the arm and dragging him off to the principal's office. As they exited the room, Joseph glanced over his shoulder with a big grin on his face. A legend was born that day, and we all enjoyed our newfound bathroom privileges for the remainder of the school year. The teacher retired the following year. Guys, it is absolutely crazy that it took a student peeing in class for things to change. Like, I absolutely hated when I had to go to the bathroom, and teachers would always say, Oh! You should have gone during this time. Like, uh, don't you think I would have gone during that time if I needed to go at that time? So yeah, teachers that deny bathroom privileges suck. And teaching for 30 plus years, I can only imagine how many kids she made squirm in class, guys. Okay, about 10 years ago, when I was 19 years old, I worked for a regional grocery store in the meatpacking department. The pay was bad, and I had a second shift. I came in at 3 o'clock and left at 11. Now, it wasn't a terrible job, all things considered. I had the meat room all to myself, so I could listen to music and really just not be annoyed by other employees. My duties when I showed up was to package ground beef and other beef-based products and put them on a shelf. After 5 o'clock, I also had to juggle working behind the deli counter. Well, shortly after getting hired, the boss of the meat department showed back up from vacation, and I was the new guy. Everything was fine at the beginning, but I found out that when I would clock in, the lady behind the counter who we'll call Valerie wouldn't be there, and there would be a line. So I would clock in and spend the first 30 minutes of my shift doing her job. Not really a problem, since I actually like that position. Well, after the line was done, I would almost always see Mr. Boss staring me down angry, saying that I'm not doing my job. He would give me the rant about doing my duties unless customers needed my help. And they almost always did, but he wouldn't listen. I come to find out that the reason Valerie wasn't behind the counter is because her and Mr. Boss were having meetings in his office, with the door locked. Now, not my husband or wife, so not my problem. We continued this dance of me covering her station and me getting in trouble for it for a few weeks, until a snowstorm hits. I tell my boss I can't come in, as my car is stuck in the snow and I'm waiting for a ride so I might be a little late. He then proceeded to fire me saying that this is the last straw. By the way, I hadn't had any write-ups before this. I agree that it's fine because I hate this job anyway. So fast forward two years. I'm now 21 years old and I'm celebrating with my friends at basically the only local bar in this teeny tiny crap hole of a town. And when we walk in, who do I see? It was Mr. Boss, but he wasn't with Valerie, he was with his wife. He looks at me and tries to act as if it's a happy coincidence. I sit down, I tell him it's my 21st birthday, and he buys me a beer as a gift, and I chat him up. Enter my petty revenge. 
So I introduce myself to his wife, and during the conversation, I bring up in a joking manner how boss would often force me to cover the deli counter almost every shift for half an hour and give me crap for it because it wasn't my job. I then turn to Mr. Boss and say, Remember that I told you that I wouldn't have to cover deli if you and Valerie weren't having your daily locked door meeting in the office every day? I then turn to his wife and say, yeah, the door was usually locked with them inside. It was at that point she looked at him, looked at me, and she couldn't say a word. Now, it could have been read as crappy, but his wife was super polite and friendly. She was a genuinely nice person, and I'm glad I could help pull the wool to let her know that her husband is a complete garbage person. I freaking love how the boss buys OP a beer, and OP's like, well, in return for this delicious beer, I shall ruin your marriage. Because you, sir, are an awful person. (laughs) Serves that idiot right. And hey, I'll just leave this top comment right here, guys. This person comments and says, V entirely misunderstood the job of meatpacker. Hey, if you get it, you get it. Alright, so this isn't necessarily my proudest moment, but I'm tired of being the outcast. So my husband Pete comes from a family where the women are all bakers. I'm a baker myself, and I used to sell out of my house under my state's cottage laws, but I stopped because I liked it being a hobby. Pete's sister Kay, who's 39 years old, is the one who's well known for her cupcakes and her cake pops. When I first met everyone years ago, it was the first thing I learned. Everyone always talked about everything she made. Even when Pete mentioned how good my stuff was, everyone would always say that Kay sells hers and they're more popular, so they must be better. Whenever I bring treats, they're often left untouched because they're not Kay's. And yes, I've been told that. They ask me to bring something every get-together and never touch it. I don't know if they do that on purpose. To be clear, Kay is mainly a baker, whereas I bake and specialize in professionally decorated cakes. And Kay often says that overly decorated cakes are compensating for their bad taste, and Pete's family agrees. So we had a barbecue Monday for Memorial Day, and everyone made their treats. Kay decided to bring cake pops. Now, the thing is, she posted them on her Instagram the night before. And I know this is immature, but I made the exact same ones she did. The same flavor and design. We got there, and everyone asked where my treats were. I said they're in the car, and I'll get them in a minute. So I waited for everyone to be outside, and then I brought mine in and put them next to Kay's. After we eat, I noticed the family eating my cake pops and not Kay's. Now Kay didn't notice at first, and then asked if they weren't feeling cake pops. Everyone said they just ate them and they were the best she's ever made, and asked what she did different. Mother-in-law even said that they look so much better in person than in picture. At that, Kay was confused, and she said hers were still on the table. And that's when I said, oh, I brought those. Glad you guys all enjoyed them. Now, immediately when everyone heard that I made them, they change. And everybody else just says, yeah, they were okay. Kay didn't say anything the rest of the night. Now, Pete thought it was funny, but his brother, Kay's husband, said that what I did was mean. And he says that I'm just mad that Kay is a better baker. But Pete said that it's ridiculous that the family, including Kay, puts down my baking when they won't even try it because I'm not Kay. Guys, that petty revenge that Obi pulled was delicious. Having everyone say that her cake pops were better than what Kay has ever made and looked better than she's ever made has got to be a great feeling. And what's even better, guys, is that deep down inside, you know Kay was fuming. Honestly, I think everyone just needs a hug. It's not a competition unless you make it a competition. Seems pretty childish what the in-laws are doing to me. I recently bought a house, and I've been having some work done before I move in. The house was empty on the market for about 6 to 8 months before I bought it. One morning, I got a call from my contractor, asking me about moving the cars in my driveway. And of course, I had no idea what he was talking about because I hadn't moved in yet. I left my job site and drove nearly a half hour to get there. As soon as I arrived, the people on the east side of me were walking towards their cars. It was at that point I asked if it was their cars and they said yes. They told me they'd been parking there for a few months, with permission from the owners. I then informed them that I was the new owner, and they can't park there any longer. We went back and forth, and with the intention of being a good neighbor and trying to show some goodwill, I agreed to allow them to park there for a few more weeks, until I move in, with the agreement that they would move them by 6am every morning. The rest of the week went by without incident. The contractor called me about scheduling a walkthrough on Saturday, and we set a time for early afternoon. When we arrived, there were four cars in the driveway, and nowhere to park. I called them and asked them to move their vehicles, reminding them of our agreement. After 20 minutes, they finally came out and moved them. 
Speaking with them, they claimed to have misunderstood, and thought that the agreement only referred to weekdays and not weekends. I corrected them and moved on. On Sunday morning, I grabbed the trailer and loaded up some furniture to take over and store in the garage. Once again, there were cars in the driveway. So I called them and got voicemail. And that's when I texted and said that they had until a tow truck arrived to get them moved. No answer. So I called the tow company. 45 minutes later, two tow trucks showed up. They backed in and hooked up the cars. All of a sudden, the neighbors were home. They ran out to stop their cars from being towed. And it ended up costing a little over $300 to get them unhooked. I then called my contractor and asked if he knew someone who could put in a driveway gate. And he did. I let the neighbors know that they could no longer use my driveway. On Wednesday, I get a call from the gate installer telling me that there's cars in the driveway again. I called them and said that tow trucks are on the way and they moved. The gate was installed and I went by to pick up the opener that evening. That's when the neighbor husband comes out to confront me and I opted to just call the police and deal with it legally. That Saturday, I went by to accept an outdoor furniture delivery and to check on things when I noticed a towel beside the pool and a small kid's flotation device. Now, my initial thought was that I hadn't noticed it before, so I wrote it off and threw them both in the trash. On Saturday, the movers arrived with everything, and we began moving things in. About 7pm, my daughter and I leave to grab some dinner, arriving back at the house around 930 And we catch the neighbors in my pool. They were hanging out and using my furniture. When I opened the door and began raising hell, they told the kids to go inside and the children ran to a corner of our fence and just walked right through. They had cut out the privacy fence so it could be removed and they had been using the pool at their leisure for who knows how long. Again, I called the police and filed a complaint. The dad was arrested for trespassing, destruction of private property, and an outstanding warrant, and the oldest boy who was 20 years old was also arrested for an outstanding warrant. I replaced the fence with a new one because they had destroyed the posts, runners, and pickets by removing and reinstalling the panel. Small claims awarded me with a total cost of an 83 foot by 8 foot privacy fence which came out to $3,800. The following Monday morning at around 5am their cars were parked in the street, where there's no street parking so I made a phone call. They were gone when I left for 7am. I haven't been paid yet, but I did notice a for rent sign in their yard this morning, so that's just as good. Good riddance. Yeah, so it sounds like Opie definitely dodged the absolute worst sounding neighbors ever. And seriously, he's lucky that they were just renters, because if they were property owners, boy oh boy, it would have been a freaking nightmare. And guys, you would think, you'd think that if you had outstanding warrants, you'd try to be avoiding anything that would get you extra attention, aka not committing crimes. But they don't sound like very smart people anyway. So OP does come back with a few updates, and the updates say, Number one, for those of you suggesting a security system, one was installed that week, along with six cameras around the house, a ring doorbell, and a fence around the pool itself to keep dogs and my grandson out of it. I'll be closing and covering the pool in the next few weeks. Number two, I met the owner of the house yesterday evening. The house will be completely empty by the end of the week. They were evicted for non-payments of rent, likely due to tow charges, and the husband's not working because he was incarcerated, where he remains. The warrant was for back child support. The wife apologized and claimed that she was told they had permission to use the pool, and they didn't. Number three, the material for the fence was purchased through my company account. I'm a structural engineer and a commercial construction manager for a large local general contractor. Only two posts had to be replaced and a handful of runners. It was just pickets which cost me $260 per stick and I purchased about 210 of those. The rest was labor and fasteners, so altogether about $900 for materials and stain. $150 for a dumpster, and the rest went towards labor to finish it on a weekend. And number four, the petty was only me twisting the knife by having their cars towed from the street, when they weren't affecting me at all. Okay, so when I was about 13 years old, my mom married a complete loser. My parents had recently divorced after 15 years of marriage, and I guess mom was feeling pretty vulnerable. Enter Dick, so named here because he was one. When I first met Dick, he seemed pretty cool to me. He'd talk about stuff like UFOs and astral projection and other nonsense that I was ready to believe at that age. He had really cool stories of stuff he'd done. And he talked to me more like a friend or older sibling than a parent. I only found out later that he was a total D-bag. So after a while, the shine started to come off the bubble. Dick was always out of work, but of course he had one totally valid excuse after another. I also started to notice that he was often bitchy and overly critical of others, and verbally abusive, especially towards my younger siblings. The more closely I listened to his stories, the more outlandish they sounded, and the more holes I noticed. 
He told me he had won some weightlifting competition at the state fair and that he'd also been a door gunner on a chopper in Nam. He told me he'd also played bass in a band and sometimes it was drums. And he'd also been around the world as crew on a cargo ship and on and on. Now, the clincher that he was totally full of it when I was telling him about how I was learning logarithms in algebra. And the guy says, oh yeah, I'm real good at logarithms. It's easy. It's just rise over run. Now, not only had he confused logarithms with tangents, he also didn't understand it either. Anyway, the more I paid attention, the more I saw what a childish, mean-spirited, lying sack of crap Dick was. The guy was constantly snapping at my mom, my siblings, and me over the most trivial of things and his stories became embarrassingly transparent. I honestly felt embarrassed listening to them. And then came the first time I got laid. Now, previously, he seemed cool about this stuff. We'd trade dirty jokes, and he'd often let me look at his secret stash of porno mags. If I went on a date, he would ask if I scored. Stuff like that. However, one night when I was 17, I said I was staying over at my friend Greg's house, but actually, I stayed at the house of the girl I was dating. The idiot decided to drive past her house early the next morning, specifically out checking up on me. And when he saw my car was there, he knew I lied about where I spent the night, and dick went ballistic. I got home a couple of hours later, and he's not there, and my mom's acting a little concerned. She shows me a note he wrote to her, lots of rambling and attacking me, but basically he said, your son is a disgusting pervert, I want him out of my house. Reading that, I laughed, thinking, ha, his house. It was our house long before we met him, and he'd contributed nothing, and he was mooching the whole three to four years he'd been there. Of course my mom knew that Dick was overreacting, and while she was unhappy at me for lying to her, she wasn't flipping out about it. She was half pissed off about the lie, and half worried that I was gonna get a disease, or make her a grandma way too soon. So pretty much, I got laid, Dick found out, and he writes a vicious note to my mom, telling her what a piece of crap her son was. And one of the things in that long note was a rant along the lines of, all that staying after school to work on computer stuff is fake. He's just pretending to be a good student. But really, he's just out screwing everyone in town. The guy's gonna be a loser his whole life. Computers my ass. Blah blah blah. Yep, all those years of straight A's were fake. He also went as far as to take a printout of a programming project I was working on, separate the pages, and crumple them up in a heap on my bed. This was back when Fanfold Printout was an invaluable debugging tool. Granted, it was easy enough to print out another copy, but it was the weekend, so he made it a real pain for me to make any progress before Monday. Anyhow, almost 30 years later, I'm in my mid-40s, and mom and dick have been divorced since I was in college. I had no contact with him since. I barely even thought of the guy, other than to hear the occasional bit of gossip about how he's still a loser and keeps trying to sue my mom, but he gets thrown out of court every single time. But one day, I'm talking to my brother about how I'm going to be passing through town where we grew up and I was going to try to stop in a bar that we used to hang out. My brother tells me that he last heard that Dick was bartending there. So naturally, I made a point to stop in. I was pretty sure the guy wouldn't recognize me, as in high school, I'd been pretty skinny and had long hair. Now, I have a middle-aged paunch, a shaved head, and a beard. Now, I'm not rich by any means, but I've done okay for myself. So I was feeling a little smug when I pulled up to the bar in a nicer car than Dick had ever hoped of owning. I was also dressed well, and looking about as sharp as a stocky 40-something can look. As expected, Dick did not recognize me. I almost didn't recognize him either. If my brother hadn't told me he was working there, I might not have. Now, where I had gone paunchy, he went the opposite way. The guy looked emaciated and unhealthy. Maybe he was sick. I don't know. I don't care. I had a couple of drinks, and when it came time to pay, I got my petty revenge. Remember the torn and crumpled computer printouts? I pulled a handful of singles out that I'd prepared ahead of time out of my pocket. They were each ripped partway through, and crumpled. I then dropped them on the bar, and also dropped my business card next to him. My business card said, my name, senior engineer, of a big old tech company, etc, etc. At first, Dick just saw the crumpled bills, and he gave me a, what the F, man. And I didn't wait to see if he read the business card, but I assumed he did. As I heard him mutter, god damn it, as I was walking out, I could hear him slam the cash register before I got into my car. I'd say messing with him with the torn and crumpled bills was fun, but I'd like to assume he saw my business card and then noticed the car I got into. I'm also feeling giddy about him looking like death and working in a crappy dive bar. Living well is truly the best revenge. 
100% my friends. So much for him thinking that OP would amount to nothing but a loser, right? Guys, I would have paid money to see his face when he realized who OP was after all those years. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash petty revenge. Guys, if you enjoyed today's stories, hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed, hit subscribe to listen to more of these wacky stories. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, I'll link it right here. An ultra-rich Karen thinks that she's above the law and thinks she can get away with attacking police. And a police officer teaches her a lesson that she won't forget. Guys, go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.